What's up, YouTube? This is Boston Chris. Welcome to the channel, Boston Chris Comics. And so I am back from the Little Giant Comic Con, a Little Giant Old School Comic Show. Let me give it the proper billing, the proper title. Um, what a great show! Um, just in terms of you know um, the precautions they took, um, you know the ability to actually have a show, um, you know during a pandemic was, was just. Um, you know, something that everybody questioned. I mean, this was supposed to happen back in April. And then, um, you know, everything got locked down and, you know, you couldn't have any kind of social gatherings. Um, they actually handled this really, really well. Um, you know, I can't say enough good things about the show um, as far as, you know, um, they they had plenty of hand washing stations. They made sure everybody social distanced. They, um, you know made sure that everybody was wearing masks, you know, and everybody was cool, everybody was just doing what they had to do, you know, and they had to check out the books, and, um, you know, that's the other thing about that show that makes it really cool, is just that, um, you know, when it comes to, um, you know, that convention, or that specific show itself, um, it's really all about the comics, it's not anything having to do with, um, celebrities or any of that type of stuff, um, like, like the bigger, um, stuff, like, like, um, Boston Fan Expo has just an incredibly... I don't know, an incredibly big, like, tunnel vision infatuation with getting celebrities in, more so than um, getting in artists and stuff. Like, they usually have, the, the one thing I can say for them that's kind of cool is that, you know, they've gotten some big name people. Like, last year was Tom McFarlane, the year before was um, Jim Lee, which, really, that's cool. But, I mean, in terms of other fan expos, I mean, pretty much every other fan expo, other than Oz in Boston... I mean, it always blows eyes away. Like, like Todd McFarlane and Jim Lee are just standard guests at, like, um, Dallas Fan Expo or Fan Expo Toronto or, or, you know, all these other ones. that like, And we seem to just kind of get stuck with, oh, we're, we're reuniting the cast of Goonies. Great. We're, we're, we have, uh, you know, the cast of Back to the Future. We have William Shatner. John Travolta's here. Ooh, whatever. Like, you know, so it, it's one of those things where, you know, to have an actual show that's about books and comics and stuff like that, you know. Um, un unfortunately, they didn't have as many artists as they were, you know, initially going to. Um, Sam De La Rosa did end up coming, which was awesome. Um, you know, and so did uh, Keith Williams, who... Keith Williams worked on, um, you know, Web of Spider-Man and I think um, Spectacular Spider-Man towards the, like, later on in those runs. So, um, you know, another cool guy. Um, so I was able to, you know, meet, um, you know, both of them again, which was really cool. And then just, you know, see some just amazing books. And I mean, just to kind of give a sample of, you know, the different books that I saw. Um, you know, I mean, they had everything for everybody. Whether, you know, if you were a modern collector, they're like variants, you know, no problem. If you like Golden Age, they, they, there was a few Avengers that had, I mean, a big section of Golden Age books. Um, you know, Silver Age, Bronze Age, you know, all types of stuff. Keys, dollar books, you know all types of stuff so you know however whatever type of collector you were there was something there for you which was awesome um you know i mean i saw so i, I stood next to somebody um as i was digging through books they ended up buying an x-men 94 and then um, a couple booths down um as i was walking into this uh, other booth um you know somebody had just bought an, um x-men 101 the first thing i was like jesus and then somewhere um i forget which vendor it was that had the um Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one, uh, you know, at a 7.0 for 14 grand. I was like, way too rich for my blood, but, you know, got no problem with that. I, like, you know, I, I, you know, really do um, enjoy, you know, just being able to say, oh, I've seen these comics and stuff, and just, um, you know, got to meet up with uh, a couple guys, um, you know, in the community. Um, one who's pre predominantly um, Instagram, his name is Boston Bat. Um, Boston Bats, super nice guy, um, and then, uh, Theory23, met him today, you know, another really cool guy, um, you know, we had some fun, you know, just kind of going around the con, digging through boxes and stuff like that, so, um, definitely a fun time with those guys, um, but let's, let's show you the books, because, you know, I get some things to show, so, um, they had a con exclusive, which I think this is, um, what's this, I, I'm, to be honest with you, um, I have to open it up to check to see the name of it because I, I don't know the title of it. It's a Boom Studios book, um, Virgin Variant, and um, I'll show the cover in a second, but what is it called? 
folk lords, folk lords. So, um, again, like the reason I'm not up on that is just because I haven't collected modern. I, I shouldn't say it like that. I don't collect new books really anymore. I, I usually just go for back issues. Um, I just find that you know going after the new books, it, it gets to be really tough and um, just. I find a lot more, you know, relaxing and soothing and enjoyable just to go off the back issues. But anyway, so this is, you know, a con exclusive virgin variant. Really, like, nice and cool colors, so pretty cool there. Um, and then I'll show you the books that I got signed by Sam De La Rosa. So we have um, League the Protector, issue number two. Um, there we go. And also Lethal Protector number one. And um, so Sam... You know, another really nice guy and everything, but um, when I was at his booth, um, you know, I, I wasn't expecting him to be as expensive because last time I saw him, he I think he was charging like five bucks per signature, and um, I guess for Lethal Protected number one, he charges a lot more now, it's 20 bucks, and then um, you know, ten dollars for every other book, so I was just like, I, I was gonna get my um, my entire Venom Lethal Protector set together signed, but I was like not doing that just because I didn't want to you know drop that much money on signatures so I was like I want to buy some books so I you know got those two signed and then called it a day with that but you know super nice guy though anyway so I went digging and found some dollar books that I'm really excited about so we got New Mutants number four um, number seven And number 22. And then also picked up uh, Marvel Team Up, uh, Spider-Man and Master of Kung Fu. So thought that was a really cool cover. And I also like that uh, Silver Samurai is on there too. Pretty cool. Um, then we got Machine Man, Volume 2, um, issue number 2. And uh, issue number 3. I only had uh, issues number 1 and 4, so now I have that completed. So excited for that. Get to read the whole story. Um, this one was actually a really fun book. Um, so I picked this up. It's uh, G.I. Jackrabbits um, number well, number one. You know, I think it's probably the only one. But I had seen this. Um, Tat Comics actually um, did a video. I want to say, I think it was an Instagram. Um, I'm pretty sure he, I mean, he posts on both. But I'm almost positive I saw it on Instagram. And, um, you know, I saw this and I was like, oh, cool. Homage to uh, G.I. Joe number one there. Um, the fun thing about this one, because I looked at it, like, honestly, I think... So th this came out around the time where you had, um, you know, just that craze, you know, the, the success of Ninja Turtles, like, made everybody kind of big. Oh, like, we'll make other anthropomorphic characters and stuff like that. So this is how this came into existence. Um, and, you know, the cover looks good. Like, like the cover, it, you know, drawing-wise, I think it looks cool. And then, um, but inside the book, I swear that it seems like, you know, maybe like a 10 year old kid drew this. Not that, not that I'm, you know, saying, oh, this is terrible art. It's not terrible art. It's just the fact that it really does look like a kid drew it, which kind of makes it cool because it's just like, you know, if a kid, um, you know, if it was something where, you know, maybe you had a high school kid, something like that, you know, publishing out a book, it's pretty sick. So I thought that was kind of a fun find. Um, next up, we have. Um, Another book that um, I always wanted to add to my collection, um, but I was looking for it for nice and cheap, and I found it. Uh, Avengers 221, so, you know, the whole, who's going to be the new Avenger? Pick two, you know? So, really cool cover. Um, definitely one that um, should be in dollar bins, um, you know, and really, at shops I've gone to, I've seen that it's crept up a little bit just because everyone's like, oh, you know, who, who's going to be in it? Who's going to be this? And who's going to be that? So I think a little bit of speculation is kind of driving that book up a little bit. Um, and then also on eBay, it's a roll of the dice. I've seen them for as low as like, you know, I mean, ho beat up copies that people want like five, six bucks for. And then I've seen, you know, some auctions where it's cheaper. And then other people are like, yeah, it's like a $20 book. I'm like, I don't think it, I don't think it'll ever be a $20 book, but whatever. Anyway. Um, next, I was able to pick up this set, um, which is the uh, Storm and Ileana, um, the Magic uh, 1 through 4 series, uh, the 4 issue miniseries, that takes place in between um, the, I think it's X Men 166, uh, where she's, um, you know, still like a, you know, teenage girl or whatever, 
and then um, comes back as a um, you know full of grown adult um, and I think so it takes place it kind of I guess goes in between her transformation from being a kid to an adult and then um, you know turning into magic and, and how she got her demon powers and stuff like that so really cool and then all you know best cover of the whole bunch is this one here where she's you know a demon child here so definitely cool I'm actually really looking forward to reading these um, next we have Daredevil number um, 81 and so this cover is really cool I like this one um, this is before it turns into Daredevil Black Widow um, and I forget what the other thing is in with this there's something having to do with Iron Man I think this is like I think there's a um, either a preview or something having to do with Iron Man getting his own series I'm not 100% sure um, but really cool square bound issue so definitely you know one that you don't come across every day definitely a cool one um, next I have a book that I'm actually really excited I've never owned this one and um, you know as I'm amazing at getting second appearances we have none other than the second appearance of Venom so Spider-Man 315 really excited about this um, next we have Avengers 92 nice Neil Adams cover um, this is um, I think part of the Kree vs. Scroll War um, but always a cover I liked I've always liked you know how you know just the way that they go about it you know really well done well drawn so definitely one I'm looking forward to reading later on um, following that we have Silver Surfer number 15 really really excited about this one um, I kind of slowly started to get more of those books and um, I really want to get 14 but I wasn't able to see, I didn't see that one and um, you know I just figured you know 15 just as good you know get a fantastic four appearance you get you know him fighting the human torch um, so definitely something that I'm excited about having and gonna go ahead and read at some point um, next we have um, you know a couple books that uh, really in terms of um, you know just the show itself uh, I, I would say that these are the uh, these are the two books that I was most excited to get um, as far as just books that stand out so um, these are my I guess best in show books that I got um, so first one we have is Doctor Strange 169 so this is the first issue in the Doctor Strange run cutting off from Strange Tales um, really love this cover I've always loved this cover as far as um, you know you have the actual projection of um, you know Doctor Strange and uh, you know just the um, I think this is I want to say um, that I'm not sure if this is Ditko out or not I be honest with you I have no idea um, but really really awesome and excited you know nice Silver Age um, Doctor Strange book and the last book one that I was actually um, going up with intent to find um, and I mean they had a bunch of them so it was just it was an easy find it was just kind of trying to figure out a good deal with it and um, I was able to come to an agreement and it came out you know just really excited to have it so we have Spider-Man 361, the first appearance of Carnage. So really excited for this one. Um, definitely one that I wanted to have. I have um, a second print that I got signed by Mark Bagley, but I just really wanted to have that first print. So um, super excited to have that in my collection. Um, so that was it. That's what I picked up at the con. Um, you know, again, it was a great show. I had a really, really good time. Um, you know, found some what I think are amazing books and um you know just excited to add them to my collection um so with that um i pretty much am you know gonna still try to look for some books here and there but um we're doing a um so a couple of guys um you know youtube um and instagram guys um in you know basically you know the massachusetts area uh trying to organize a um crawl similar to what uh, three men in the basement did and the, and the new york warriors did um so we wanted to kind of do one and um you know just 
go hunting for some books together and get you know just kind of get together and meet up um you know just because a lot of people um as far as you know just community in general it's just like you know it's, it's good to you know you can get out and meet people and see like you know hey you know boston chris hey i'm such and such you know so really cool and um also get to see some shops that you don't normally check out um just because you know you know maybe in my area like i know these four shops but then somebody who might be living nearby to me or, or a little further up or down um know something different it's like oh no check out this shop it's like oh man never been here before this is gonna be cool so um you know hopefully gonna save up some money for that and uh go ahead and um be able to get some more good books um so that'll be happening um next month we probably won't tape it i'm, I'm not sure i mean if, if it's videoed it won't be by me just because i don't have any sort of mobile video and i mean other than my phone and my phone will die in two seconds, so I'm not going to do that. But I definitely will show you the books that I pick up from that. So um, that's something I'm looking forward to, and that's something that, you know, really i um, excited about. And, oh yeah, I almost forgot because I'm tired because I woke up really early um, to go ahead and um, get to the show. But um, I sent off three books to um, CBCS. There were three books that were signed, so I'm taking advantage of the fact that they're giving yellow labels for uh, verifications now. And... Um, as far as you know, um, the books I submitted, I, I submitted a Ultimate Fallout 4 signed by Clayton Crane, a um, Spawn number one signed by Tom McFarlane, and a Secret Wars number eight signed by Mike Zek. Um, the Zek, I think, is probably going to come back at 6 5. Um, most likely just because of the fact that um, you know it wasn't pressed at all. I think with the press, is probably strong 7.0. But I didn't get it pressed. I just kind of wanted to send it in as I had it, just to kind of see what the grade was. Just because I'm trying to get my, um, I'm trying to really get a good gauge of books. Because I mean, if you send in all nine eights, then you know, sometimes you don't know what you're looking for. And I just kind of wanted to have a good gauge on you know what constitutes this grade versus that grade. I know it's all subjective, but I just figured sending in a couple things that kind of you know have well two like the um ultimate fallout and the um spawn i think should be i mean at, at the very least for the both of them um i'm expecting maybe like a nine two um i, I would say the spawn because I, I mean the spawn i've had since i was about 12 years old so i kept it in really good shape which is you know good for me but i, I would say you know nine oh nine two is, is what i'm expecting if i get it like a nine four or something i'd be excited the um, Ultimate Fallout 4, I'm expecting, um, hopefully, 9.2 or better. I, I think um, it's probably, you know, 9.2 to, like, you know, 9.4, maybe 9.6 if the grader likes me. Um, nothing is a 9.8 just because, unfortunately, um, you know, they can't all be perfect or close to perfect. But it's as good as it's going to get. So I'm, I'm excited for that. And um, I will definitely do an unboxing when it comes back um, and, you know, be able to say hey look what i did i got something graded and this is what it came back as and you know this is what i'm looking at so i will figure all that out and then you know show that when it comes so it's gonna be a couple months but it's all good anyway i want to thank you guys for watching i'm going to bed just because i was up too early today um so i hope everybody has a good rest of their weekend um as always thank you for watching hope you enjoyed the video i'm out happy collecting